1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 18. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, Hawaii Allah. I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be abound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that are waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. Tonight, we're going into a lesson concerning uh, the heresies and being a heretic. Uh, one of the things you have to understand is that as we're moving on towards salvation and walking on the path, at times what's going to happen is there's going to be doctrines that are going to come up and there are going to be some things that will be discussed in order to help brothers and sisters grow in the faith. Um, but also sometimes when these things happen, there will be heresies that will come up. And what we have to understand is how do we deal with heresies uh, whenever they come up? So we know that according to the book of Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 19, that heresies will be come up because the Most High is going to use that as an opportunity to show which men in the body are approved. Okay? That means that the person who comes with the heresy, okay, and they come out with the heresy, this shows that that particular person may not understand what they're thinking, or talking about, and they may have been misled because of their own vain opinion. However, um, it's an opportunity to correct them that way that they can be built back up. It doesn't mean that that person gets is uh, gotten rid of immediately. It just means that it's an opportunity to correct them and to show who is approved among the body. Now, we're going to go into you know what happens if the heresy is brought up again. Uh, but for right now, we're discussing what's going on in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 19. Okay, so the Most High uses these things to help build up the body and to also manifest uh, the leadership and people who the Most High is dealing with. Okay? Now, one of the things that happens as a church grows is that you'll get people that come from various uh, points of view that come from outside of the Bible itself. And many times this can influence the way that they think um, about a particular doctrine, okay? Um, this is one of the reasons why heresies come out because there's a lot of vain opinion going in and it's all a lot of people's own natural desires coming into the doctrine versus exactly what the scripture says, okay? So what happens with it is that by it coming in, the Most High is also trying to prove those who are actually approved to see who is going to step up and identify this heresy and going to correct it. And this is what happens, generally speaking, is that if a heresy comes up, there's men that the Most High already has installed that will then examine and correct that doctrine. It is not something maybe for everybody else to do. Okay, and many times what happens is a lot of times um, as brothers come in, they may be more hesitant to probably want to step into the mode of being willing to correct or willing to say something, even if sometimes they may see that the doctrine is false, but they may be hesitant to say anything out of fear. And this also is a testing process for that person as well, because if the Most High is setting you up to be a, an evangelist, okay, um, a teacher, in this walk, then he's going to have situations going to come in where you have to rebuke with uh, all long suffering and doctrine. That you're going to have to step up and say something and do something about it. Okay, and it's something that we have to understand in our walk. It is not something that many brothers want to do because they want to be cool with every uh, brother or sister in the faith. And this is why a lot of times in various groups and even in the in the Christian community or whatever, they allow certain things to slide because they don't want to cause any problems even if they know it's false they just want to be cool they want to let things just keep flowing because they feel that they would lose somebody as a brother or sister of the faith if they say something and you can't be worried about that because again we're not here to serve man but we're here to serve okay yahweh through yahweh shot so whatever somebody feels about um whether or not they're uh, going to offend somebody by going over the truth of a particular doctrine, you are not showing yourself to be standing upon the principles and the doctrine of Yahweh Shai, where you where you have to defend even with your own life. Okay, so 
what we're gonna do, we'll go ahead and go into the actual other translation, just so you can kind of get a better, deeper understanding of this particular scripture. So we're gonna go into the NLT, says, but of course there must be divisions among you, said that you who have God's approval will be recognized, okay? So the Most High uses these divisions to basically get, show who is recognized and approved. Now, these things actually happen in time past in the Old Testament. One of the reasons why I tell brothers uh, to read the Old Testament as well, because the Old Testament, the also the gospel accounts and the book of Acts is where you actually see certain things come up, certain frames of, uh, of thought or heresies or things that will be said that are incorrect or done that are incorrect. And you'll see uh, men of the Lord step up and correct those situations. In the Old Testament, it is no different even in the New, okay? So the Most High will use a heresy uh, that was brought by somebody to stir up a division because this is what happens when the heresy comes in. Many times it's coming in from somebody that is um, has at least some level of pull within the body. A newer brother that comes in a lot of times it's harder for them to bring in a heresy because they're so new and they don't really have the level of rapport with the body, okay? So a lot of times they're just in a stage that's just being corrected on any false doctrine they have coming in. And we know about it. You know, we talk about changing the way one thinks about the world and what they believe growing up. This is the standard thing dealing with the repentance from, you know, dead works, okay? The many false idolatries and celebrations and frames of thought uh, that people thought was actually pleasing unto the Lord and thinking that it was actually something that they should do. One of the early stages of a one's walk, especially when they believe in Yahweh Shai, is they're re realizing that the things that they believed in, okay, uh, was actually a sin and it was offensive to the Most High and they need forgiveness. And this is what the forgiveness they get through believing in Yahweh Shai, being baptized in water in his name for the remission of sins and receiving the Holy Spirit. And now as newborn babes, they are given the milk to grow thereby and they begin to understand and discern, you know, right from wrong, okay? Having their senses exercised as they grow spiritually and mature. So a lot of times what happens is if somebody is teaching uh, the doctrine and they're in a body, somebody may feel that maybe that they are not um, making as much as an impact. Or for example, maybe they may feel that they need to bring something to the table and they need to show their ability to be um, a higher level teacher or somebody that's able to get revelations. And through their, their own ego and pride, they'll then curate something believing that it's actually right when it's actually wrong. And this is where heresies come from. Heresies, the origin of heresies is really uh, presumption, okay? It's pride, it's ego. It doesn't come from a space of humility of how does this edify and help the body. Many times it comes from a place of ego and self-willedness, okay? And this is the reason why we have to understand that the things that we teach, we have to go from the angle of, is this what the Most High wants us to teach? And is this something that is given without partiality and without hypocrisy, meaning is this something that is truly going to be considered a correct doctrine in the day of judgment? Okay, so we have to understand that everything that is out there that is in the Bible, we have to really examine everything. And this is one of the reasons why I tell brothers and sisters to keep things simple. Okay, because many some of these things, like the scripture says, is too high for you to understand. And it might not be something that you might be in a position to really search out at that time. It doesn't mean that later on, especially for you brothers that are new or still growing, that you may not get better understanding. But there's a reason why when you came in, there's other brothers that you can talk to and run things by who have been around longer and have seen these type of things come up and can tell you what it is that you really need to understand in order to get salvation. Okay, because there are certain answers you're not going to get on this side until the kingdom comes. But there are certain things that are important for your salvation. So focus on first the things that are important to your salvation and stop trying to basically find a way to find a slam dunk, uh, you know, revelation when really that thing is coming from a place of being self-willed. OK, and hence the reason why the heresies pop up. OK, because this is something that we've seen 
Uh, we had situations where somebody was, was, was actively trying for years to bring in a false doctrine and it kept on being warned about and shot down and eventually that doctrine ended up coming out and we had to deal with that particular situation and I see we see it all the time um, where somebody will pop up and maybe they haven't been around for a while and then they just got this doctrine that they bring up and they want to introduce it to the body hadn't talked to anybody about it they have not done any particular uh, proper order and done de things decently in the order to bring it to the people who can then examine it and to see whether or not it's right or wrong okay so um, as you see, it continues going on. You know, NIV, no doubt, there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. Okay, so you know, it's something that has to be done in order to establish who the people, or who the men are um, that the Most High is dealing with. Okay, and when the doctrine is refuted, the heresy is refuted, and the true doctrine is shown of what it really means it's going to be the other brothers in particular that are going to see it and they're going to see what's right and what's wrong okay so this is one of the reasons why this will happen now what we're going to do uh we'll also go into that definition okay for heresy which is a strong g139 all right we'll go ahead and play it so you can listen to some greek Strong's G-139, Hyresis, Hyresis. Now that word there is Hyresis, okay? Sounds very similar to heresy. And um, it says here, the act of taking capture, storing a city, choosing choice, that which is chosen a body of men following their own tenets set, dissensions arising from variety, okay, or <clears throat> diversity, of opinions and aims okay and that's what a heresy does it actually you know is meant to cause a division or separation okay that's what sectarianism is is a different sect within the body so what happens is when a person brings in a heresy their whole point is to actually cause division in fact one of the ways in which a heresy is brought in it is not brought in through a channel of examination for example Say a brother is reading the scriptures and he misinterprets an understanding of the scriptures and he needs clarification. He's like, he's, he comes up to uh, the proper brothers to talk to and he says, hey, brother, I was reading this chapter. Or I was reading this verse and I'm thinking it's saying this. Does it say that or am I misunderstanding or misinterpreting this? Then that brother is shown the correct understanding. He gets corrected. He goes about his way. That's not a heresy. Okay. Because he's asking a question about something he's not understanding, but he gets corrected and because he brings it in through the proper channel, he doesn't cause a, what? A division in the body, a separation, a, sectar a sect within the body. Now, the way a heresy, a heresy would work is someone would have to bring it in and then spread it within the body to cause the division, right? So, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and go to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, verse 10. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. Now, we have certain times when a doctrine will come in, right? A brother will believe a particular doctrine that's false, and then he will be warned about it and be shown the correct understanding and this is an understanding that is stood a lot of times when they're shown it, they literally have, they say they, they have no angle to refute the proper position and established doctrine. And they usually will go about their own way. However, many times that same man that's inherited will come back a second time. Okay. Now. A lot of times they may have the first time had probably spread it out, maybe showed it to another brother or maybe promoting it within their family. Uh, and then they try and come back again with it. They might not do it immediately, but they may go back to the drawing board and then try and find more precepts, try and develop their understanding of their own heresy and then come back again. And at that point, at the second position, 
we know that this person, when they've done this, they're subverted and sinned to being condemned of themselves. Because now, you already were warned the first time. The second time, you already been, now you're checked again. We know you're done. Okay? So, we have to understand why would these things come up? Again, because this is one of the ways that Satan tries to bring in confusion in the body by using these type of people uh, to come in within the body to cause division, to really destroy the church. Ultimately, that's what their position is. That is the long-term goal of said men. Because many times when these people are pushed away, they really don't come up with nothing really new. They just come up with more heresies. Because like I've said before to you brothers, if you've watched over the years, when one thing I say about heresies all the time is that where there's one, there's many. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Heresies don't come by themselves. They usually come in packages. Okay? Meaning that this person that brings in this heresy is not going to be the only heresy they're going to have. Okay? They've been subverted. Meaning they've been overtaken. And not only they've been overtaken, they've been overtaken satanically. Okay? Demonically. And one will see the manifestation of that person through their various doctrines that they'll teach after that or whether they'll get into we have a story about a guy um, who was basically trying to bring in gematria, which is numerology, Karbala. And he was told, hey, don't bring this doctrine again. Um, this is incorrect. He was shown and warned about it. He had no position after he was, you know, rebuked on it. Then some time later, months later, he brought it up again. In fact, not only do, did that, he went on his YouTube page and did a lesson pushing Dermatria. He was then called, told, this is a false doctrine. You need to take this down. This is, you don't need to be pushing, pushing this. He said he didn't care. This is what he believes in. We had to remove it. Time later, as time passed, we shouldn't, time, as time passed, within a month or two or so after he was gone, he began to show his satanic manifestation that the Most High had rejected him, okay? He was condemned of himself and the guy went full left all the way towards Satan, okay? And many times it won't manifest on that level, that deep, where someone will literally go fully into Satanism. But what will happen is over time when a heretic that's rejected, that's condemned of himself and is subverted and sinned, Many times what will happen is they will do a slow unraveling to the point where they will become antichrist in their doctrine and they won't even know it. They will literally start to promote things that are satanic and that actually lead to complete, utter devastation of those that will follow them, including themselves and their own households. Okay, so now we're going to go into the blue letter and we're going to look at different Bible translations so we're going to again read the King James Version a man that is inherited after the first and second admonition reject then let's go to the NLT if a person if people are causing divisions among you give a first and second warning after that having nothing more to do with them okay so that makes perfect sense Okay, if there's a situation that's brought up, we have somebody bring in a particular doctrine. That person may have been warned many years ago by at least two brothers. Many times, this is what we have to do with these type of situations. Whenever somebody comes with a false doctrine, it may be seen by one other brother within the body. One of the protocols that we've had, and um, some brothers are very good at this, whenever they see somebody believing in a false doctrine, teaching a false doctrine within the body, they'll then run this by somebody else that they know is knowledgeable about the doctrine and they will talk to that person a lot of times it'll be the two people or maybe even three or more people that will deal with that particular issue um some brothers have that have been around for a while may have seen this happen a few times over the last maybe four to five years where a conference call would maybe called up to discuss to warn this brother about this doctrine and go over the information and then may, sometimes they'll accept it sometimes they won't if they don't and they continue believing in that, then we have to, you know, remove, we can't have, deal with them no more because we are told that we need to speak the same thing and have the same mind in the body. And someone who's teaching and believes in something else, they cannot stay around. 
what they need to do is just formulate their own church, have their own followers, and basically show themselves to be approved elsewhere, okay? Because remember that we are not in a position where we can force anybody to believe in a particular doctrine. So why not just you go your own way since you believe that particular doctrine and you build with the guys that believe you and we're going to stay and doing what we're wanting, what we need to do in this walk. Okay. So that's why we have to do it like that. Have nothing more to do with them after the morning. Okay. So a lot of times people won't even know that they actually been warned the first time. They'll forget that. Come back and try and bring up a heresy again. Okay. And they'll think that it's actually going to be some, somehow the second time around is going to make it stronger point when all they did was just really just build up more of a condemnation against themselves. Okay. So, um, you're going to see it in the ESV it says, uh, as for a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice have nothing more to do with him. NIV also says, warn a divisive person once and then warn them a second time. After that, have nothing to do with it. Okay. So now we're going to go into also the um, verse 11. Knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. So let's go ahead and go into the different Bible translations. And we're going to go into the NLT. And like I said before in past lessons, the NLT can be very accurate, even sometimes a little bit more accurate, um, a little bit than the King James Bible in terms of understanding. It usually doesn't change the meaning of it, but it just gives more clarity. Um, I have done lessons showing that you can't always trust the NLT uh, translations at times. However, it is very good for brothers to get an understanding, especially when it matches the, um, what is translated in the King James. So as we see here, it says for people like that, meaning a heretic that have turned away from the truth and their own sins condemn them. Okay. So their own sins condemn them. Okay. One of those sins is teaching a false doctrine and also being filled with pride, not willing to humble themselves to the true doctrine. Many times these people will use this uh, gaslighting technique where they've been corrected and rebuked by more than one brother concerning a particular doctrine. And after they get corrected on it, they will then accuse the said person that corrected them as being prideful, which is nothing more than the form of gaslight. Because if you've been corrected and shown that your doctrine has been wrong and you're, and you go about after being corrected, we had a situation where, um, where a, a so-called brother was corrected on a particular doctrine he was, he was, had no position to go. Two brothers corrected him. His whole understanding was destroyed. He was confounded. He had nowhere to go with it. And he was told to leave it alone. This same guy went back years later, came years later, went and repackaged that same doctrine and then proceeded to show it to most many brothers within the body. Some of them that had no idea that this had happened prior and basically brought it back in and it caused a division. In the process of him doing this, he also told these same so-called brothers that he had confounded the two brothers that had corrected him on his false doctrine, which is it, which is a, which is a lie, and he knows it was a lie. So now, now not only did that person sin by bringing in a false doctrine, he has now lied and bear false witness that his doctrine was actually correct and he confounded the two brothers that had initially said that they corrected him which these guys didn't even know about because it was kept under wraps in private for the sake of this brother's um you know perceived position or you know in the church in the body okay so the brother was actually being saved from his own embarrassment from bringing in the heresy by it being kept in house it was amongst a small select group of brothers to where it never got out to the rest of the body. But at that point, once he did it the second time and actually himself introduced it to more brothers, he then was had to be corrected again. And at that point, he did not want to take down the actual videos and lessons that he did. And he stayed on his position. And we saw an unraveling of this man being condemned in his own sins. Okay. So as we see here in verse 
the same verse 11, but this is the NIV. You may be sure that such people are warped and sinful, meaning they're warped in their own mind and they're full of sin. They are self-condemned. Okay, so the Most High will use a heresy, okay, the heretic being warned twice to ensure that that person is self-condemned, okay? Now, as we see here in the CSB, it says, um, for you know that such a person has gone astray and is sinning, okay? Many times when you examine these people's um, lives, what you'll notice is that they'll have like other things going on. They may have idolatry. Uh, they may have a disarrangement in their marriage. Um, you know, they'll have other things going on where you know that they are already kind of like not all the way there. And so um, sometimes you, it might be somebody that um, deals with maybe they, they're drunkard, okay? Or they, they get high. You know, there'll be certain things sometimes that will show other signs. Now, this is not to condemn brothers that are struggling with various vices and they're still growing in their faith. However, a lot of times there'll be other things going on in addition to the heresy with that particular person uh, that lets you know that they're not right. OK, so it says here, um, I like this one as well, the NASB 20. Knowing that such a person has deviated from what is right and is sinning, being self-condemned. Okay? So make no mistake. Okay? That's the reason why a lot of times, you know, you got people in the Israelite community that wonder why are there are so many divisions. Why can't we all get along? We're all the same people. Forgetting that Yahweh Shai and the disciples were around 2,000 years ago, and there was various Israelite sects around, you know, Sadducees, Pharisees. Okay, you have the chief priests, you have the elders, you have the so-called Sanhedrin, you have the Herodians, you have the Zealots, you have the Sidians, okay, you have the Sakari, you have all these different factions within Israel, and they could not get together being under the Roman occupation, right? And being that it, being them being together would have actually help them take down, right, uh, the Romans at the time. However, we know that the Most High was set, setting up a division between the real and the fake in Israel, okay? So the Most High is using these type of things that happen for them to be made manifest, for them to be rejected. So that way he can continue to build up the body as he sees fit, okay? So let's go ahead and go into the Strong G 141. The word there, okay, very similar to the word for heresies. We'll go ahead and play it. Strong's G 141. Hereticus. Hereticus. All right, so hereticus. Remember, this is a heretic. So, <clears throat> so again, it goes fitted or able to take or choose a thing. Okay, schismatic. Okay, meaning someone who causes a schism, a division. Okay, this is a person, a noun. Okay, a, a factious, a follower of a false doctrine, a heretic. Okay, because remember, this doctrine is false. So a follower or a teacher of a false doctrine is inherited. You know, ones that lie and love at the lie. So you have someone who creates the doctrine, who is, has a false doctrine. He teaches it, then he gets followers. This is where the division comes into play. So many times what will happen is this person will bring in the false doctrine. Within this false doctrine, you will see a complete division. Okay. It could be it could be big, it could be small, but usually the most high will allow when this comes into play, the person to then follow and believe this false doctrine, and they'll have other people that will join. Many times the person who created it will be warned and corrected about it, in addition to the other brothers that are following it. Sometimes the brothers will listen, okay, and they'll get back into the correct doctrine, the true doctrine. Sometimes they won't, and they'll follow the heretic, the one that initially taught them, and they'll be a follower of that false doctrine, and they themselves are also removed from the body as well. Hence the reason why when these heresies come out, one will have to find out who taught it, who did he teach it to, who believed it. Because sometimes a, uh, a heretic will teach the doctrine to various brothers or try and show them that, 
And the, some brothers will reject it and say, nah, I don't believe that. That ain't right. Or they'll go and look up the actual teaching or ask, ask certain brothers, the ones that are, that they know have a great understanding. Okay. To confirm whether or not this doctrine is, you know, real or not, whether it's true or false. Right. So you have to understand what all of this is for. So we're going to go into the etymology for an heretic. Okay. This is from etymonline.com. One who holds a doctrine at variance with the status or dominant standards. Okay. So one of the things that um, early on when this, you know, what, what people call a camp or group, when this was established, when we established this, we had prayed that the Most High was going to give us understanding and was going to give us the correct doctrine that led to salvation. As time progressed, it was made manifest the true way of salvation. And once we understood that, we had established standards that were meant to be stuck by. One of the things in this binding prayer that was done was that we said that the doctrine, the true doctrine will always come before anyone's own personal understanding. That's the reason why whenever something, if a brother gets a revelation, one of the things we talk about is if a brother gets a revelation, that he should show it, okay, to the established brothers at the time, and that it will be done by a majority uh, vote to establish which is the dominant position, okay? So, for example, if you have three brothers and they and one of them comes in with a new doctrine that he believes he got a revelation for, he's then to show it to, let's say, two other brothers that are of good understanding, and those two other brothers will examine the doctrine. Having no uh, position of wanting to establish the dominance over the, that said person, but understanding that the whole point and the standard is to elevate the word of the most high, to elevate the gospel. If the two brothers decide that that particular doctrine is false, then that is not taught and is put to the side. If one brother agrees, but the other one disagrees, then that particular doctrine becomes an established doctrine or position. Many times what you'll see is you'll see situations come up and I'll actually have to do another lesson on it to show like how uh, something like this works. We understand that where two or three are gathered in the most, in Yahweh Shai's name, there he is in the midst. We know that by faith that the Most High is going to establish his way of salvation according to his will and not the will of man, right? Believing and understanding this, the Most High has to make manifest the truth in a doctrine because this is his doctrine and this is the way for salvation. So in having faith and believing that, we have to understand that the Most High is going to show and reveal what is right and what is wrong, okay? What is the established and dominant position, okay? This is the reason why when you go through the New Testament, you have the gospel, and the gospel was said and spoken in red letter, and then continued on by his apostles. This is the reason why it's also known as the apostles' doctrine, right? Because later on, with the chief cornerstone of Yahweh Shai and his red letter, you then establish the foundation, the rest of the foundation of, of the apostles and prophets to shore up a standard that will be raised up in the church of Yahweh Shai, right? In the body, okay? So this is one of the reasons why we have to go into what is an established, meaning a built-in established position, a foundational position and standard that we would have to stick to, okay? This allows us to fortify a proper defense against heretics and their heresies, okay? So let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. So the apostle Peter, okay, who walked with Yahweh Shai, understood that false teachers will be among the people. 
the most high set it up that way. That's the reason why a lot of times in the newer brothers and sisters, they'll get confused as to why division will pop up um, over doctrines. But this is the reason why, because this is has to come to pass. There has to be false teachers that rise up. So that way the true teachers can pop up and rise up and rebuke the false teachers and to warn them first and second admonition and then put them away. This fortifies the position. One of the things that we realize is that when these false teachers come up, they'll do it privily. So let's go into this as who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. A lot of times these false teachers, they don't do it like boldly. They do it privily. Let's look at that word for privily, okay? Because we'll actually go into the NLT as well to show how priv privily works. See, a true teacher is going to be bold in their teaching. They're going to say it on the block. They're going to bring it in conference calls. They're going to say it boldly. And they're not going to be privately doing it, right? So that word there for privily is the Strong's G3919. Strong's G 3919. Parasago. 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 So privily bring in means to introduce or bring in secretly or craftily. Okay? So they're going to bring it in secretly or craftily. What they'll do is a false teacher, a false prophet. What they'll do, a false teacher will basically in the body, they'll secretly go and curate the doctrine. And then they'll try and slowly bring it to different people in the body. Many times they'll choose people that they bring it to that they feel like they have the strongest rapport with. Or they'll bring it to some of the more ignorant brothers that are new and don't have proper understanding yet. And they'll try and bring it in that way. This is how they establish their different faction within the body and to cause the division. They don't ever really do it in a way that's transparent where you go, let's say the person has a doctrine. They actually are teaching with brothers that are established and have high understanding. These are brothers that the Most High has shown um, a lot of revelations to. Instead of just going to those brothers and saying, hey, look at this. What do you think about it? They will then instead try and go and first introduce it to other brothers that have lack understanding. Okay. Or that are new that struggle with the understanding of the scriptures. Maybe they are still learning. They'll privately bring it in and then they'll curate it amongst like a set of brothers to bring it to basically cause a division that other brothers, the uh, other brothers that don't know this is going on are unaware of. Many times this thing will catch the true brethren off guard because sometimes this person may be working on this for months and probably years where they're trying to basically establish privately their position by teaching a false doctrine and heresy, okay? To later in later bring it in as a way to cause a friction and dissension in the, in the body against those that are true teachers and have already established a dominant position, okay? This is one of the ways in which <clears throat> like coups work Coups work in such a way where you have maybe an uh, established leadership, you can see it at another country, and you have like a few guys that will then have dissension, and what they'll do is they'll go around and they try and get people to come on their side, so that they later on, when they're ready to try and com to commit an overthrow of leadership, they'll at least have enough people behind them, and feeling they'll be confident that they can overcome these people by swaying them in that direction with their damnable heresy, okay? So again, they'll bring it in privately, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So ultimately, that's what eventually it'll, it'll go to, okay? It'll go to that level where the Lord will be out of the picture, okay? Now, what we'll do is just go into the other translations so we'll get NLT 
but there were also false prophets in Israel, just as there shall be false teachers among you. They will cleverly teach destructive heresies and even deny the master who bought them. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction on themselves. You know, I mean, this is kind of what happens. It's just it's like, you see it, and a lot of times it'll be made manifest, you know. It starts one way, they leave, then they start to basically go more left, more left, more left until they have nothing left of themselves, right? So, these type of people, they always have a modus operandi in how they move. They do these things privily, okay? They do these things privily for a reason, and that's the reason why you see some of these doctrines come into play. Some of these doctrines we already discussed, some of these doctrines are things that you've seen commonly even in the Israelite community, um, but you know that these things are usually done secretly. And they're done secretly because this is the w best way for them to introduce it through their influence to gain disciples, um, draw disciples after themselves, um, to basically go up against those that are more, that deal with the established and dominant position of the doctrine, right? So we're going to the NIV as well. But there were also false prophets among the people. But as there will be false teachers among you, they will secretly introduce destructive heresies. See, another way to look at it is they will conspire. It'll be a conspiracy. So these guys will call each other. And, uh, you know, the one person will already bring it. He'll introduce it. He'll get buy-in from one person. Then he'll get buy-in from a second person. They'll talk to each other about it. They'll basically say, hey, this doctrine is correct. Um, you know, the, um, the leadership or the, those established guys, they don't look at the position. You know, those guys, they don't know what they're talking about. But we're going to, but this is really the right way. I'm showing you that this guy and these brothers, they don't know what they're talking about. They're wrong on this. And we need to probably separate, create our own situation, or we need to create a situation where we can hurt the established and dominant position that those brothers believe in and they try to gain buy-in many times they'll gain buy-in from people that are actually really not established in their understanding they'll actually get people that they know that they can mislead okay so we have to understand that this is exactly how these things work they're brought in privily okay they're privately brought in see the apostle peter understands this you know, being a one of the chief apostles, the original ones um, that was with Yahweh Shai and that also, you know, had probably seen many things over the years, he show, tells you that it does not happen really openly. It's privately brought in. Okay, these type of people they understand that they're dealing with people that really know this, know the doctrine very well, and if they bring it out openly, they get they get rebuked openly. So privately bringing it in, gaining enough buy-in to bring it in is the best way that they know how to do it, right? So that's the reason why we have to understand what a heresy is, the purpose. Again, the purpose of the heresy is to what? Uh, so who is approved in the body. In addition to that, the heresy exposes the heretic. When the heretic brings in the doctrine, he is then corrected, okay? If he has to be corrected a second time, then we know that this heretic is perverted, subverted, and sinned, and is condemned of himself. Now, at that point, this heretic has to be removed for the sake of keeping the body in peace, in a state of tranquility, speaking the same thing, having the same mind, okay? So, we have to understand that this is a must that has to happen at times. Thankfully, we're towards the end of this time. We know that we are getting closer and closer, that the brothers that are actually establishing themselves on the proper doctrine, that they're going to continue to follow the path of salvation, and they're going to try and keep things simple and on the straight path towards salvation, understanding what are the more important things. But those that basically don't look at their salvation from the standpoint of just the gospel and keeping things in a gospel way, they're going to be led astray, okay, by damnable heresies, which was meat for them. So hopefully this is edifying. And again, I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. 
And we do so in the name of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be abound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom.